really amazing experience of resolving, you know, the majority of my chronic pain in like a matter of days. The five biological laws present itself as a viable translation in the realm of like physical health of this story of interbeing. Today is a day for breakthroughs and for new epiphanies and for broader perspectives. I sense that. Full of anticipation for this day. Yeah, my name is Freya and I've been in the kind of alternative health world for I think basically maybe 10 years now. I mean, maybe longer if you kind of from like the beginning of the first time I ever watched like, um, you know, those vegan health documentaries on Netflix and started like going vegan and drinking green juices and whatever, but, but like seriously kind of going down this path for about 10 years, primarily because of chronic pain. That was kind of like my, my driving force and, you know, did all of the things, you know, became an organic farmer, like it really went, went all in. Um, and, uh, I found out about German medicine through Dr. Melissa Sell probably as a lot of you have um, at the beginning of COVID time. And, you know, it made a lot of sense. It resonated with me. And it wasn't until about a year and a half me, oh, over that now that I had um, like a really amazing experience of resolving, you know, the majority of my chronic pain in like a matter of days by connecting um, the dots about the original conflicts and the tracks. And so I had this really amazing experience of something I'd been trying, I'd spent you know, tens of thousands of dollars trying to uh, resolve. And then, you know, I did with Germany medicine. So uh, from that point forward, kind of just like went all in. <laughs> and uh, I have a tendency to get quite obsessive, which is, you know, helpful when it comes to something like, like Germany medicine. Friends, that was a... An introduction of a course Joey is currently participating in. It's a course just for women and uh, it might be the case that I was listening to some parts of it <laughs> about the five biological laws. This course is hosted by Freya Kellett, host of the German New Medicine podcast and uh, I like over the past years multiple times I dipped my toes into the waters of this completely, completely different paradigm um, of understanding our body and its symptoms and disease and health. It really builds on the assumption, and this is why this topic resonates deeply with me, it builds on the assumption that every re reaction our body is expressing is good. It is dedicated to us thriving. Whereas in the current dominant um, narrative, people always talk about bacteria and viruses and like be out of bad luck, you are getting a severe disease and then like everything was perfect and then they got cancer and their health went downhill and then they died. Like it's always this narrative of the enemy is on the outside and we need to protect ourselves against the evil forces that are surrounding us. And this is strongly interlinked with what Charles Eisenstein calls the story of separation. It's a it's a worldview. It's nothing that is that is inherently like true. It's something that we perceive if we subscribe to this worldview. But there is an alternative, <laughs> and this is what Charles describes as the story of interbeing, like the interconnectedness of everything, the ultimate perfection of all things, that every part plays a significant and a valuable role in the thriving of the whole orchestra of life. And if we subscribe to this worldview, that we are all interconnected pieces of a bigger organism, 
then the dominant narrative in healthcare and in medicine crumbles. And this is the moment where the five biological laws present itself as a viable translation in the realm of like physical health of this story of interbeing. And it basically says every reaction our body shows us, be it a running nose or a back pain or a cancer, is actually something beautiful. It's a reaction to a conflict shock that we encountered and is a, is a mechanism in order to deal with this conflict shock. And therefore is fundamentally fundamentally beneficial. these five biological laws was when I heard the story of Dr. Hammer and he discovered these five laws and he had suffered the tragedy of losing his son in an accident and he died and in three months after this uh, tragic loss he developed cancer in his testicles and since up to that moment he was never sick in his life uh, like really severely sick he had the assumption that Maybe these two events, like, are related. And he was working as a, as a medical professional, as a doctor in a, in a clinic. And then he surveyed all his around 200 cancer patients that he was working with at the clinic or in the past. And he asked them whether before their cancer diagnosis, they had suffered a similar stroke of fate, like a really, really severe incident in their lives. Like this, bam, this really, something hit, hit, hit you like a bus, like something really, really, really severe happened. And all of them said yes. And this strengthened his sensation that something else is going on than what the standard medical narrative tells you. And he examined this even further and he found out by asking a series of questions and examining them, like really connecting with the biological function of our bodies. Like what happens on a biological level when you lose your only child? Deep down on a bio, like our bio biology is, uh, is the same as hunter gatherers like hundreds of thousands of years ago. So like we developed our technology and we developed our brains and so on, but like our whole biology is not very, it's not very sim it's not very very different from uh, our earliest ancestors and like back in the days like the first homo sapiens when they were roaming around in the african savannah and then a, a man lost his only son what was going on inside his body of course there was a deep fear of like not reproducing and as a result your species going extinct because you are not reprodu reproducing you are not passing on your genes so it would make it would only make sense that if you suffered an incident like this that your body would do everything at that is at his disposal in order to support you producing more offspring so a performance enhancement of your genitals, of your testicles, would just make sense in order to raise the possibility to produce more offspring. And as a result of this performance enhancement, Dr. Hammer found out that of course there will there will be a surplus of tissue, and this surplus of tissue gets diagnosed by the by conventional medicine as a cancer. But in reality, Dr. Hammer found out that there was nothing to worry about. This was not a severe punishment by the gods or, or an incident of bad luck or whatever. It was just a sensible biological function of your body to 
enhance your chances of producing more offspring. And after a while, this cancer, like, it went away. Like, he didn't, he didn't do anything. He didn't do any, any chemotherapy or like anything else. No. <laughs> after the body realized, oh wow, the survival of my species is not in danger. Okay, there's still enough human beings and I can still be a father again. Like, everything is alright. This, perfor this performance enhancement decreases again and the tissue um, the tissue gets the surplus of tissue gets removed and as it was all the time everything is in perfect order there was no disease there was no sickness there was no cancer there was no nothing it was just a sensible biological reaction of your body in order to support you in this extreme circumstances of losing your son <sighs> and then he dove deeper into this rabbit hole and realized that everything that we call disease, that the conventional medicine like treats with pills, with all sorts of like drugs, really drugs, are in reality just sensible reactions of your body in order to support you in your survival and in your thriving. That's it. Wow. Wow. One of my favorite quotes is the one by Mark Twain. Whenever you find yourself on the side of the majority, it's time to pause and reflect. I encountered this quote probably 10, 11, 12 years ago and when I reflect back on all my explorations that I did in the area of nutrition, holistic health, entrepreneurship, relationships, parenting, spirituality, like I really, I really, I really looked under a lot of stones and checked whether they are in the right position, whether what main, the mainstream narrative tells you is really in alignment or not. And I can tell you, this quote is so true. Basically, in every area of our lives, what the mainstream is doing is not working. This is one of the most fundamental realizations that I had in the last decade. So what if the conventional narrative in medicine and health is equally not true. I'm not an expert in the five biological laws. I'm just starting my exploration. That's an interesting idea I'm pursuing right now, but one that really resonates deep down in my body. And of course I will test it. I will experiment with it. And the beauty is these five biological laws, you can just test them in your own life with your own body. Like check all the symptoms you have and really figure out what is going on there. So course I will test and I will not buy into anything that uh, that doesn't prove uh, accurate but so far I have the assumption I have this this hunch of like probably there is some truth to it and if yes holy smokes everything that big pharma tells us might be not true and probably some people know that and suppress this truth in order to preserve their business model. Because you cannot earn a lot of money with people who know that their body will take care of them perfectly. Which doesn't mean that you never need conventional medicine. No, 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 no. Of course, if you have a car crash, it's nice to have a doctor that, uh, yeah, <laughs> knits your body together again. Of course, I'm not saying that conventional medicine is like bad at all but it is probably overused a lot and it probably comes with the conscious exploitation of billions of people on this planet and that to me feels deeply wrong
when you start? I don't know. I don't know. Honestly. <sighs> <laughs> we entered a rabbit hole. That is pretty fucking fascinating. Yes. And uh, I, it was very hard to stop this process. I like. You, in the in the morning we said let's <laughs> let's let's spend the let's spend until noon to uh, explore this topic and in the afternoon I had a lot of work to do and like it's seven fifteen and nothing <laughs> nothing got done yet because it was like we were ah we were like basically unpacking our whole history of symptoms that we had in life in childhood in teenage years and adulthood like really seeing. Like all the reactions our body showed us through this newfound lens of why is this helpful for my survival? Why is this a beneficial reaction mm -hmm. for for me? And not why is this a disease or why is this some kind of germ? I and your body is never against you. Fundamentally. It's always for you. It's like the perfection. There's this one quote. I wrote it down. I don't know, maybe I can recall it. Like... um Regarding death? Yeah, yeah, regarding death. Like Dr. Hammer, who figured all this stuff out, he said like in, in, in an interview that understanding the five biological laws really helped him to, become, to come at peace with dying because he realized how perfect everything is on this side. Mm. Like everything has a purpose and everything like life is, life is optimizing for life and life is not like wrong or life is not like... Life is perfect. Mm -hmm. And our bodies are perfect. Mm -hmm. And, and whole... all, all the reactions our body show are perfect. And he realized if everything is perfect on this side, it will probably be similar on the other side. And this helped him to come to, to get over his fear of, of dying one day and dying. Strong. And like your body is never sick. There's no disease. Yeah. Like it is still the, the perpetuation of this of this like old paradigm thinking of the the, ev the evil the enemy mm. is out there and we need to fight against it mm. this is how we as a society um combated uh, uh the, the coronavirus like there was oh. finally again there was an enemy out there that we could fight against this is something that um that was very present during world war mm. world war one and world war two there was an enemy out there which uh Uh, against which we could fight and this is a narrative that has gotten more and more obsolete over the past decades because the issues of our times they are not anymore in the like ki this kind of something out there that we could fight against like climate change like this <laughs> this 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 whole like set of behavior doesn't work like or the uh the uh the economic meltdown or the depression epidemic or whatever like this old way of fighting against something like doesn't work anymore in these times and then the coronavirus or like virus came along and finally there was an enemy out there that like the whole of humanity could rally against and then we closed all the all the airports and all the borders and like okay finally we had something to fight against but these five biological laws invite us to question if there is an enemy out there or maybe Instead, everything is perfect as it is and that everything is a sensible reaction of our bodies that is dedicated to enhancing our thriving and our survival. Mm. So, yeah. Pretty mind blown. And very excited to continue this conversation and this exploration. And there's one story that I want to share that um, perfectly connects to that. For a week now, um, we are trying to like cut Leo's ties with one of his best friends as pacifier and Elena started this process last week and she said like okay let's try it for the past two years he was using it and he was really like really addicted to this little piece of plastic um it calmed him down it was a source of security for safety and it really had a profound impact on him and of course it has it doesn't have a great impact on his on the formation of his teeth and so we said okay like now, now's the time to try to get rid of this one And uh, so now for, I think, around a week, um, he didn't have the pacifier. Before, like, every time he went to bed, like at noon or in the night, he got it. And then uh, today, Joey told me that he observed, uh, she observed that Leo around his mouth developed some little red dots. 
like his skin reacted. Mm. And then we learn that in the five biological laws, the reaction of the skin always is an indicator of a so-called separation conflict. That means if we are losing a loved one or we are losing a, a thing that is very dear mm. like to our hearts, our skin reacts because the skin is like how we touch people and how we touch things. Like all the skin issues are probably rooted in this kind of conflict. And this like... <sighs> I have so much, so much, wow, so much wonder, so much, like, incredible gratitude for the, for the wisdom of our bodies, like, how this is related, of course, he's, like, for the past seven days, he's going through a, a, a separation, separation conflict, conflict. Mm -hmm. and, like, his, his skin really short, clearly indicates that, and, yeah, I'm very, very excited to learn more about this hugely fascinating topic. If you want to dive deeper into this topic, of course, we are not anywhere close to being experts. Um, the course uh, that Joey's I'm a skin expert. Uh, jo jo <laughs> that Joey's attending, and I'm probably observing something uh, from the from the distance. Mm. <laughs> it's hosted by by Freya. Um, she has a she has a knack for explaining things like pretty nicely. So give her a follow. Do you want to share what is the main reason that draws you into this topic? Like what is the what is the spark inside yourself that that to, that told you okay I need to learn more about that you want to share that? It never really resonated with me like people who are always talking about like we have to heal we have to do this in order to heal blah blah blah. It never really clicked with me so like this different approach really hooked me somehow. And also, I mean, I've been struggling with different skin conflicts for almost, yeah, for, for almost forever. So I'm really keen to to face my separation conflicts. Mm. Yeah, and also like to understand the people around me, to understand my loved ones, to to understand the body on a deeper level. I I really want to immerse myself fully and to understand it fully yeah because it's like it's it's our temple it's mm. yeah through our bodies we experience life and so the body is very important 